What's up everybody, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to be reacting to something that Devontae Adams had to say about the Detroit Lions. So let's get it started. Welcome in everybody to another video. In today's video, as I mentioned, we're talking about Devontae Adams, but also a solution that the Detroit Lions may have to their problem for the future. So let's get right into it. But before we do that, as you guys know, click at the link in the description. Go follow Fan of Fan Network on both Twitch and Instagram. Big things coming July 4th. It all kicks off. And uh, that's Saturday. That's just a couple of days away. So definitely uh, go follow over there, okay? Be prepared because big things are kicking off July 4th and it will continue to get bigger and bigger. And it's going to be something that you guys have never seen before. You guys will absolutely love it, okay? It's for the fans. That's why it's fan to fan Network. It's going to be absolutely awesome. So definitely stay locked over there and be prepared for the takeover. Now, let's talk about what we have to talk about today. So Devonta Adams came out with some news. Okay, there was some news about Devonta Adams and what he said about the Detroit Lions. So automatically, I'm interested because, you know, hey, you're bringing up the Lions. All right, now I got to check it out. Now I might be heated. I might be happy. Either way, I got to check out what you had to say about the Detroit Lions. And it was mainly about the Lions' ability of coverage. Okay, it was about the Detroit Lions' coverage, which makes sense because, you know, he's a wide receiver. That's probably something that he would talk about. But he said that he has an advantage when he goes against the Lions and Darius Slay specifically because the Lions never disguised their coverage. That's, that was basically the main point of the entire article. He said he watched over 200 snaps of Darius Slay in coverage, and he took away that anytime Darius Slay follows or Lions follow in coverage, it's man-to-man. -man. If they don't, it is zone. They never disguise that. So there's never a time when a cornerback will follow the wide receiver, and then all of a sudden they'll drop in the zone, so it confuses the offense. Because usually, a lot of tiny teams run motion, at least in, when they're passing the football, to kind of see what the defense is in, try to open up a few things, can see if they can tell whether it's man or zone. But if you disguise that, it can really trick a quarterback, and all of a sudden, that element of just moving players are saying okay it's man or okay it's zone kind of goes away so you have to be able to disguise coverages which is very important as i've been watching a lot of our defense and our team from last season disguising coverages is very important it's something that bill belichick does well it's something that a lot of uh, good secondaries do well is disguise things especially teams that play a lot of man-to-man -to -man. and we know the detroit lions played the most man-to-man -man out of any team last season so it's very important to disguise these things so that the offense doesn't necessarily know it's coming but Devontae Adams said the Detroit Lions never do that. So I obviously had to go check back and make sure that he wasn't lying. Now, he didn't play against the Detroit Lions in week number in week six, week six, the first game against the Packers. However, he did play in week seven where he had seven receptions for I think it was 93 yards. So he had a pretty good game in the second go round against the Detroit Lions. But he was saying just Darius Slay in the Lions defense. He said he watched like over 200 snaps of Darius Slay in coverage and that what would happen is, you know, there was no dis disguises, right? The Lions didn't disguise anything in coverage. So an offense could tell what was happening if they could pick up on that the Detroit Lions were giving it away over and over and over. So I had to make sure this was true. Now, obviously, I didn't go back and watch every single game and say, okay, yes, it is true. They never do because I'm sure they do a few times, but it's definitely not a lot because when I went back and watched the Detroit Lions specifically against the Packers, a lot of times the Lions didn't disguise their coverages. A lot of times you could kind of tell what was coming. If the Detroit Lions followed the wide receiver on a motion or, you know, whoever was going out, it was like, yeah, that's man to man. And it usually was. And most of the time, from what I could tell, Devonta Adams is speaking facts. The Lions didn't disguise their coverage. So what they would do is if they saw man to man, they would run man to man meters. They'd run a crossing route. They ran tons of crossing routes against the Detroit Lions because one, we're a man to man heavy team. So coming into the game, that's your game plan. Beat the man to man defense. How do we do that? That's what we're going to do in this game both times they played them, especially the second time I saw it a lot. But that was definitely a game plan for the Green Bay Packers because they knew we play man-to-man -man a lot. Plus, when you can kind of tell what's coming, you can really set up some man-to-man -man beaters. And what they would do is run a lot of out routes. They'd send a motion on the opposite side of the field. They'd make a player move. And then all of a sudden, on the other side of the field, where a guy like Devontae Adams would be, they run out routes, slant routes, quick stuff to tight ends, stuff like that. Everything that's really tough to cover in man-to-man -man defense, that's what they did. Because I guess they actually could tell what the Detroit Lions were in it defensively. So I looked back at this and I was like, yeah, that, that's actually kind of a problem. Now, I don't know if the Lions never disguised, but what I've seen is that uh, Devontae Adams seems to be honest something here the short lines did not disguise their coverages in 2019 and then it got me to thinking a lot about different things like is this the problem with Darius Slay is this why after 2017 his numbers went way down is it not just because he's in a man-to-man -man heavy defense now I do think a lot of it still has to do with the fact that you know Matt Patricia read the tip was really really bad but we do know he got a little bit worse ever since Matt Patricia came in and maybe that's because they weren't disguising coverage as well so that got me to think about that and while I'm not going to put all the blame on that I do think that could be a little bit of a factor 
But then it got to me thinking even more. And then it made me think of the Detroit Lions offseason move to bring in a new defensive coordinator. So the Detroit Lions fired their defense coordinator, Paul Pasquale, who a lot of people didn't like. And I understand why he didn't like him. I'm not saying he was good, but I do want to point out that in that 2018 season, we had a pretty solid defense. Keep in mind, he still was our defensive coordinator. However, he probably wasn't the best. I'm just going to say that. But this offseason, the Detroit Lions did bring in a new DC who is Corey Unlin. Now, Corey Unlin, I don't think he's ever been a defense coordinator before. However, he's been a secondary or defensive backs coach. Since 2015 with the Eagles, he's been a defensive backs coach. He's worked all the time, pretty much a lot of the time exclusively in the back end, but he is now our defensive coordinator. While I still believe it's like Matt Church's defense and his philosophy, and they'll mix in a few things together, it's mainly going to be Matt Church's defensive play calling. However, Corey Onlin, being a guy that worked in the secondary specifically, could be bringing this to Detroit because this was a big problem last season. The Lions were terrible against the pass. And when I'm looking at this, I'm saying, well, hold up. Did Corey Onlin disguise coverages when he was with Philadelphia? Because if he was, then now all of a sudden I'm looking at something and maybe saying, okay, maybe this is something that Corey Onlin can bring to the table that the Lions said, okay, or Matt Patricia said, look, I want to work with somebody. I don't need a full on defense coordinator. I need to work with someone that can help me in the secondary because that's where I need help. I can handle the linebackers in the front seven because that's where, you know, I'm very comfortable. However, I need someone that can help me in the secondary. Okay. I need someone that can help me with coverages and disguises. And they went out and got Corey Unlin. So I go back to watch Philadelphia Eagles and against the Green Bay Packers. I've seen them disguise a few things. They didn't just go out there and with the wide, with the wide receiver moves, all of a sudden it's man to man that they would follow. Sometimes they would move with them and it'd be zoned. Other times they wouldn't exactly move with them and it would hop right into man to man. It was crazy. They didn't do it every time because if you disguise it every time, then you could disguise it the opposite, right? It's the same thing. However, they would mix it in here and there. That's all you gotta do is mix it in here and there. That way you're not 100% sure whether or not it's man or zone. That way the offense is think, okay, look, it looks like man, but it could be zone because they've done it before. If you never disguise it, all of a sudden the quarterback's like, oh snap, I know what's coming. And the offense can guess everything, but that's where you come up with interception big plays and we know the Lions playing all man-to-man -man defense like the most snaps defensively last season in man-to-man -man. they gave up 23 touchdowns to three interceptions maybe a guy like Corey Unlin who's bringing in these disguises defensively can help because when we brought in Corey Unlin I did a video with Daryl Bevel because I love what Daryl Bevel has done but I was really trying to figure out what Corey Unlin can bring to Detroit that would set him apart like what does Corey Unlin really bring to Detroit that can help us this season a lot of people have asked me, asked me that question and I don't think he's blitzing because I've seen a lot of similar blitzes and stunts just less often probably with Matt Patricia however I think I figured it out and it is disguises in the back end there's a reason that we brought in a defensive backs coach now he's a little bit familiar with Matt Patricia but a defensive backs coach a secondary coach is now our defense coordinator and I think that this is why this kind of just you know a little light bulb went off in my head and I was like oh snap Hold up, this might have something to do with Corey Unlin hiring. So what do you guys think? I think this could be the Detroit Lions solution. And uh, maybe, just maybe, this can really help the cornerbacks. And I hope it does. Now, I'm not saying that Barry Slade wasn't great with us. is because, you know, oh, we didn't disguise things. I think a lot of it was a relationship. I think that's where it really does start. And, um, you know, but Barry Slade didn't really want to be here. Maybe a little bit of it is because it was man-to-man. -man, and maybe a little bit is because they didn't disguise it very well. I think there was tons of factors. But I do think Corey Unlin can definitely help us in the back end. And I think that is one thing that... Corey Unlin can bring to the table. So a lot of people ask me that question. There is your answer. Let me hear your thoughts, comments below. Thank you for watching and I'm out.